Sims. Kane Sims, the one and only. Britain's finest, Mr. Kane Sims. Dustin. Dustin. Dustin Coates. I like it when you guys are together and talking about boys. Without further ado, welcome to the show. Hey, hey. <laughs> there we go. I do like that, Dustin. I like it a lot. Yeah. How is that? Is that new? I I gotta say, I didn't listen to last week's episode. Yeah. Well, you were too busy being a parent, Dustin. Yeah. So yeah. That's why it is new. I rustled it up. Um, oh, I like it. It's nice. Yeah. It's all right. It just it bridges the gap between waiting to see whether we're actually live, and yeah. actually going live. And so, yeah, we'll we'll iterate that. I'm sure. But uh, that's good. That. That's good. Yeah. How are you doing, Kane? Very well, very well, very well. How's parenthood? It's good. It's tough. It's good, but it's, it's definitely tough. Uh, we chatted about this earlier um, in the week. I'm thinking of spending thirteen hundred euros on a on a smart bassinet for the next six months. So that maybe tells you a little bit about how things are going right now. Worth spending the money on. I think, <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I think so. But uh, but tomorrow is Thanksgiving, and then it's Black Friday. You got any, you got your eyes on anything? Not really. I always just look at the Amazon devices and things like that mm-hmm. and think, do I need any more? Um, <laughs> so not in particular. Now, what about you? Nothing in particular either. I do wish the new Echo Show was out because I definitely do want to get one of those. But that would yeah. be the only thing that would be be on my mind. Strate- strategically delayed, I would say, because they probably don't want to reduce it immediately. Possibly, <laughs> possibly. But but you'd also think it would be a good uh, Christmas gift. So who knows? Mm. That's true, that's true. Anyway, we'll uh, we'll we'll get on with the show, uh, which is sponsored by the Conversation Design Institute. And if you are a conversation designer uh, or budding conversation designer, someone who wants to get into conversation design, wants to learn the ropes, wants to learn the best practice, the methodologies, wants to know the the practices, the tools, the materials, all the kind of stuff that you need to be a conversation designer, then check out the Conversation Design Institute. I'm pretty sure that the Conversation Design Institute, I hope I'm not speaking out of turn, but I'm pretty sure that they work with Google in formulating this course. And so there's a lot of stuff in there that is coming from Google. Um, and it is definitely worth checking out. It's reasonably priced. It's an online course. You can do it at your own pace. There's self-assessments in there. Well, it's not self-assessment. It's self-assessment as in you test yourself, so to speak, but you do get scored and you get graded, you get certification at the end of it and all that kind of stuff. It is definitely worth checking out. So do visit the Conversation Design uh, Institute. We have a 25% discount for all the UX World listeners, which we'll put in the show notes of this uh, of the show. And uh, thank you to the Conversation Design Institute for sponsoring this episode, as always. Uh, okay, Dustin, let's do this. Let's, let's do on. it. Let's go. Let's, let's get on with the show. Let's introduce our guest today, Noel Weichbrot. Welcome to the UX World. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Dustin. Excited to be here. Glad to have you along. Glad to have you along. At short notice, a swift addition, um, and you've been inserted at the helm now of Spokestack. Tell us, uh, tell us what's gone on in the last few days, and uh, and what you're up to at Spokestack. Yeah. So, um, just uh, uh, we made a we made a, um, a leadership change, um, mostly because um, I really focused around um, our focus on putting voice uh, 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 into developers' toolkits. Um, and so that's something that uh, we feel like has been uh, lacking. And um, I, my background uh, is a, a couple of decades in software development, um, you know, various uh, large and small uh, companies. And uh, so we feel like um, we're very well positioned uh, both in, you know, uh, product thinking um, and technology um, and, and, and it's really kind of in our, our marketing and our brand to, um, offer tools uh, to developers to put uh, voice into the software that they make. Nice. And so now you're president of Spokestack. Is that right? Yes, president. Um, you know, uh, you can you can you can call me whatever whatever you want. <laughs> um, it's uh, t- titles aren't aren't that important. What is important, um, you know, is is uh, what we uh, are are what we're trying to do for the development community. Um, and that's, you know, who we want to, who we want to focus on. Um, Dustin, it was actually interesting. You mentioned the Amazon show, um, just to get into a little bit of, of history for, of Spokesack uh, as, a, as a company. Um, the Amazon show, when we started, wasn't, uh, wasn't uh, was 
probably just a glimmer in Amazon's eye when we started um, developing voice apps for smart speakers. Um, so back in 2017, um, we were looking at kind of the uh, the landscape around um, you know machine learning, voice technology, um, and we're really convinced um, that, uh, that that was like the big future wave, the same way that um, mobile, uh, the same way that uh, tab uh, tablets or smart speakers um, were, were were pushing things forward. Um, so we thought about you know how how can we um, how can we um, help progress uh, the voice interface movement. Um, and so we thought, you know, let's we make software. Let's make some software that takes advantage of, of, of voice. And we uh, made a, a couple smart speaker apps, uh, Tasted and Bartender. Um, but as we were building them, we realized, you know, these are very incomplete uh, if they just have a voice interface. In other words, like, uh, it was realizing that the modality of voice is really well suited to some things and is really ill-suited to other things. Um, and so kind of taking it as a, a vo voice, where voice fits and where it doesn't fit uh, was an important realization. Um, and so we uh, pioneered really um, doing multimodal uh, applications. Uh, multimodal meaning uh, where we use voice, we use screens, uh, we use a web browser, we use a um, mobile device. Um, and we even uh, realized like you may have more than one smart speaker brand in your house. Um, I know we, I personally like have a um, have an Alexa and a Google Home sitting here. Um, you may want to be able to transfer your conversation with a with a brand or with an app in between all those modalities. Um, so we developed technology that would allow us to have uh, the same conversation, the same persistent conversation across your web browser and your uh, mobile phone and your Alexa and your Google Home. So you can, as you move from room to room and modality to modality. Uh, you could have that same experience. Um, and we still think that that was a great idea. And I think um, when we met with Amazon, they agreed. Um, they, of course, wanted to uh, take over everything for us. And we said, no, thanks. Um, and shortly thereafter, um, uh, the, the Amazon show came out and uh, basically just kind of uh, proved to us that our ideas about uh, multi multimodal uh, interfaces that incorporate voice, but that aren't exclusively limited to voice is like the way of the future. And so today you're focused on something a little bit more constrained. What is it you're building today? What is it you're offering? Yeah, so so today, so we, um, in order to get all that, uh, that multimodal experience, we had to build a whole bunch of tools ourselves. Um, when I say tools, I mean, you know, software. Um, and uh, so, so part of what we built, we realized, you know, this is actually, this is general purpose. This isn't just uh, specific to Bartender and Tasted and the and the smart speaker apps we were developing. This is general purpose uh, of voice technology that can be incorporated into any software, um, not just ours. Um, and so we we pivoted there for um, for a number of reasons, um, mostly because we. We're all developers, and we're really passionate about offering um, uh, APIs and tools, um, making them open source, uh, and giving all that to back to the development community so that they could um, put voice into their software. Um, so that's what we offer now. Um, we make voice accessible to every developer, um, mobile, web, embedded. Um, we have uh, specific APIs for um, iOS, for Android. Uh, for Node on the, on the on the web, or on Python in the embedded space and the data science space. Um, just to break it down a little bit, like uh, another thing that we offer is uh, there's a lot of talk about voice um, and how important it is. Uh, what we found when we talk to developers, and I like uh, as president, I'm, I handle all the support requests um, for that come in for our company. So I see kind of the front lines of how people are being tasked with, hey, we want you know, voice into our work. Um, but there's very little kind of understanding about what that means, you know, what the specific technologies are, um, and kind of no conceptual models uh, are, are, are really common for how uh, these things work. We offer um, what we call the four legs of the, of the voice stool. So the four legs for us are um, uh, a speech pipeline, um, and that incorporates, you know, voice activity detection, automatic speech recognition, uh, wake word detection. Um, second leg is uh, uh, natural language understanding, um, NLU, um, that takes what you uh, 
takes what, what you speak and turns it into um, uh, an intent, a set of intents and thoughts that computers can understand. Um, and that, uh, that we then pass along to your app. Um, from there, uh, your dialogue management, which is the third leg, uh, figures out how to respond. And then um, optionally, there's a fourth leg, uh, text-to-speech, so your app can speak, speak back um, to the user um, using TTS. So those are the four legs of, of the stool, and that's kind of our conceptual understanding of the technology that underlies uh, voice in the market. Um, we offer, you know, uh, not only, uh, I mentioned before, our open source APIs, um, we also offer custom development of uh, wake words, of uh, natural language understanding models, of uh, custom TTS voices too. Um, and hundreds of developers have used uh, Spokestack to put voice into their software so far, and uh, we're super excited to, as we develop and as we improve our tools and as we uh, give more tools back into the software community, we're excited to see like where it goes. Nice. Is the is the where you're at the moment? You've got all that technology. You're seeing it most being deployed and used. Is it that uh, most of the developers that have been using it have been voice enabling their apps? Have they been voice enabling their websites? Like, where is it being used most? And have you got some examples of some use cases that are either maybe some of your favorite or some some sort of like standout use cases? Yeah, the, um, there's a lot of interest um, in in the accessibility community. Um, so uh, I was just talking with the with the, um, with the with the user the other day about um, incorporating uh, uh, a voice interface into um, a kind of uh, embedded platform that would be distributed to um, to uh, uh, nursing homes um, and other kind of uh, low technology um, uh, um, education places um, that. Uh, can provide a super simple inter interface with both the screen and the voice interface. Um, and, uh, you know, kind of provide a slimmed down, very straightforward um, portal into some of the mo modern technologies, you know, being able to make phone calls, um, being able to ask for help, being able to, you know, do your crosswords every day. Um, these are great, like, uh, use cases for voice and they're also great um, use cases for like how to incorporate spoke stack um, into your into your software um and that one kind of features voice as like a uh, first class um uh interface um you know you, you can also um incorporate voice just as a uh, as a kind of uh alternate modality um one of my favorite examples um they don't they don't use us um because we weren't around when they were developing but um bank of america uh, the big, you know, financial services company um, has their own voice um, assistant. They call Erica um, because they understand that, like, uh, it's uh, convenience and security that are the selling points for their products. Um, just like, you know, they shifted from bank branches in person to doing ATMs, um, and just like they switched from ATMs to online banking, uh, voice is another modality for them to reach their customers. Sometimes it's more convenient, sometimes not. It's an option that the consumer should be able to have the choice of. Hmm. Bank of America is a good example. So with er with Erica, the you can ask it a question. It can just answer you. Or it also actually can pull up displayed information. Like let's say, for example, if you asked Erica something like, uh, what did what what was my expenditure? in Walmart last month. It can actually pull up a graph that will plot the expenditure over time and stuff like that. And so it kind of, it's a voice assistant, yes, but it uses the visual interface really well and it doesn't just respond audibly or with text, it also responds with different graphical accompaniments and things like that. Is that the kind of experiences that you can build with the Spoke Stack technology? You know, uh, that's a great question. Um, back in 2017, when we made Tasted and Bartender, um, we realized like, uh, your voice makes a lot of sense for certain for delivering for giving information and for delivering information for certain things, but not for others. For example, um, search using voice. You know, you had um, uh, Speechly on here, and they gave a great demo of of how voice 
search is a super natural way, uh, super space natural uh, way feels, to uh, feel supernatural sometimes. <laughs> if you look at the it, out of it. it was a great demo. It was a great demo. Um, uh, that's a very natural way to, to conduct the search um, and much better than having to type. Um, on the other hand, we found uh, when we tried to read back a recipe for shashuka, um, it was a terrible experience to have to listen to the voice read paragraph after paragraph after paragraph of information. That information is far better to be just put onto a screen so you can scan it. Um, your eyes are just going to be much a much faster way for you to process uh, all that information. But on the other hand, uh, if you break uh, a recipe down into steps and those steps are short enough and you're cooking and you have chicken hands, as we call them, uh, mm -hmm. around my house, uh, you don't want to touch a screen. Um, you want that information to be convenient and accessible to the modality that you uh, that you need at the time. Um, so, you know, short recipes or short recipe steps, they're great for voice. You know, long like recipe descriptions, really terrible for voice. That uh, competency of being able to uh, understand where it makes sense and where it doesn't as far as information delivery, as far as cons consumer convenience, um, that's the that's the real uh, trick to designing great voice interfaces. Hmm. So, so t talk to us then about how how does the spoke stack how how does spoke stack manifest itself on a website? We give an example of Erica there in terms of you'd speak to it, it can respond with audio, it can respond with text, it can respond with images. Is that the kind of thing we're talking about? It's a it's a, a chat widget that can sit on a website or a chat widget you can open in an app and you can ask it questions and it can it can then respond. Or are we talking about a voice interface that essentially controls the website where you just say something to it and it will navigate you to the right page? Or is it a search kind of tool where similar to what we described there around Speechly, like how how does it manifest itself on uh, like in a, in an application, for example? Yeah, of course. The um, it's 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 a it's a good question. Um, it's you know it's it's hard to talk about these things uh, without sounding without sounding big, just because they're 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 concepts. Um, uh, but we offer you know concrete technologies uh, that embody these concepts. The um, one of the ways you can we 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 make we've tried to uh, develop. Um, all kinds of different ways for developers to incorporate uh, the Spokesec uh, voice technology into their software. Uh, one way, um, among, among among several, um, is what we call the the um, Stripe approach. The we have two components that you can drop in. One's a front end widget um, that gives you a little button to press, and that um, initiates the voice uh, interface. Um, drop that into the front end, and then on the back end. Um, just like Stripe, you know, drop a payments button onto their front end, then put a webhook for the payments platform into the back end. For Spokestack, drop that, drop that Spokestack widget, we call it. Um, or sorry, Spokestack tray, uh, which is a kind of a UI widget, onto mm -hmm. the front end. Um, and then on the back end, you subscribe to a, um, uh, a an NLU classification event. Um, and uh, once that widget gets the speech, it converts that speech to text. It processes that text, it gets um, interized some intents and slots out of there. The intents and slots form the basis of a uh, computer command, basically. And uh, from there, it's, uh, again, we're targeted at developers. Developers know what value their software provides. Um, we don't, um, you know, it's, 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 it's the same thing with the, with the, the Stripe. Uh, Stripe can provide the, the payment processing for you, but it can't produce the product and it can't deliver the product to the customer. Um, the same way your app has a, has a unique value proposition, um, we can classify what the consumer, what the user wants and tell it to you. Um, it's up to you to figure out how to respond to that and how to deliver that, uh, uh, that response to the user in a way that makes the most sense for, uh, for your software. Um, so, that's one approach, the, the widget with the back end um, classification. Um, another approach is that we've written a full set of, uh, I mentioned the stool, we've written a full set of uh, um, four legs of modular APIs. Mm -hmm. And those APIs, um, those APIs offer um, uh, kind of a modular approach. You can pick up our speech pipeline and use our wake word, voice activated, you can use our ASR, uh, you can, not use that and just use our 
and OU uh, uh, leg. You can not use those two and just use the TTS leg um, or the dialog leg. So um, at a technology level, at a software level, we offer a whole suite of APIs that we think allows you, again, we developed this building our own smart speaker apps that were multimodal cross-platform. Uh, and so, so we offered the same set of tools to everybody else. Cool. And what are who are some of your customers, or what uh, verticals are you finding that are adopting this most? Yeah, so um, we have customers, man, across. Um, I really uh, you kind of asked this question earlier too. Um, it's hard to classify uh, where uh, any particular vertical is is super popular, um, uh, just because they kind of seem all over the place. I think it really reflects um, that voice is still new and still developing, and people are not finding out about it kind of en masse in any certain industry, but that it's uh, you know kind of the the, the leading edge uh, software developers out there who are and product people out there who are figuring out like voice is a thing. I'm going to figure out how to use it. They find us, and then they we're 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 their we're their solution to putting voice into the software that they're building. Um, the uh, we were just talking to um, some creative agencies, you know, that have clients that would like to, um, you know, white label some some uh, some voice interfaces. Um, we're talking to um, you know existing kind of uh, technology providers that would like to. Um, Offer the ability to extend uh, some of the um, some of their assets into uh, into 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 voice services, um, and we've uh, and we've talked to um, you know kind of a variety of, of startups um, who are you know building from the ground up to use voice in their software. Nice wake word detection is an interesting one because th there isn't a huge amount of, of voice technology vendors out there that that have wake word detection capabilities we had soundhound on we had mike from soundhound on recently and and we spoke about it like briefly with him soundhound is one of those um technologies that does allow custom wake word detection and i know that i've heard rumors about alexa having you know room for a lot more uh potential for wake word detection other wake word detection over and above alexa which opens the door potentially to amazon devices having the ability to access other assistants like through the interoperability initiative and things but it's not something that you see all the time so i wonder whether you can talk us through how wake word detection works with spoke stack and is that something that me as a user i can set up or is that something that's part of the managed service like talk us through how how that kind of works right so um our our, our spokesec um wake word uh detection um uses a um a custom machine learning model that we've uh that we developed um and that we uh offer uh, to our clients um and you can you can you can have us train up um you know a uh a, a, a wake word model in 20 minutes um uh, or we can develop, you know, kind of a, a, a super accurate, um, very well trained uh, model over over a few days. Um, the way it works, um, technology wise, uh, where it fits. Um, so uh, if, if you you're, you're putting voice into your app, uh, which means that you need to uh, listen. Um, the same way that I like to use the analogy of you're at a party, um, and you know, there's all kinds of people talking uh, at a party. Uh, pre-pandemic days of course <laughs> um and so uh, you're not necessarily listening to everybody's conversation i mean sometimes you are because you're dropping is a lot of fun sometimes at parties but um you're, you're not necessarily listening to the conversation that every single person in the room is having you're listening to the one conversation that you're involved in or um if you're like me you're standing kind of standing off uh by the wall and just hanging out um but you're listening you're listening for your name um, and once somebody says your name, uh, you start paying attention. You start uh, kind of processing what what they're saying and uh, uh, kind of excluding everybody else. That's what a wake word is, uh, just a super high level, is um, a, way to, a way for a machine to listen for its name and kind of ignore all the other talk that's going on um, until, it hears its, until it hears its name. Um, so for Spokesack, um, like I said, we have um, custom vault. Um, machine learning model that runs entirely on device. Again, since we're open source, um, you can verify uh, that we only run, you know, in your um, 
on your device and we actually throw away everything that we hear that isn't uh, your wake word. Um, once that wake word activates, then we start processing uh, the what you're saying um, using ASR and MLU and dialogue. Um, but wake word is basically that that polite thing to do, which is, you know, don't sit around and listen to everybody, and which is also super computationally expensive and actually te te uh, technologically impossible right now. Mm -hmm. um, but instead, just li listen for someone to say your name and then start paying attention and then start inter interacting with them. Interesting. Yeah, it's an it's an interesting um, it's an interesting concept that I think. What, what do you think? Do you think we're going to see more kind of apps and more hardware and more sort of um, instances where there is custom wake word detection for different brands, or do you think that everything at some point will be rolled into Alexa and Google Assistant and all that kind of stuff? What, what do you think the the trend is towards custom wake word detection? That is that is, that is an excellent question. Um... I think the, the key point um, that I'd like to make is that uh, we offer that ability now. Um, you're no longer depending on uh, Apple or uh, Amazon or Google to do that for you. Um, you can start offering that to, uh, as, a, as a service to your customers now. Um, it's not limited just to smart speakers and it's not limited to just the, the, big, you know, the big three technology companies um, that, that want to do this for you. Um, you can own the conversation um, and own your own voice interface to your customers. Um, like I, I used, I used uh, the the fintech example before, but you know they they get that you need both privacy and um, accessibility uh, for for your products. Um, the uh, uh, all that said, um, going live, I believe today um, is a is a is a tutorial on how to incorporate. Um, Google app actions, which is their, you know, shortcut um, service on Android uh, into a spokesec powered app. Um, so you can start your, your, your user can start the interaction on uh, their Android device, you know, they can say, okay, Google, uh, you know, open Starbucks. Um, and Google will go open the Starbucks app. And then from there, Starbucks, or your, your, your own app can take over um, and start owning the conversation from there using Spokestack so that you can, the user can continue and say, I would like, you know, a double grand matte with whipped cream. I'm actually order Starbucks. This is a bad example. Um, but uh, is that a real drink? I hope not. Uh, it sounds like one. <laughs> you convinced me. <laughs> um, and and uh, from there, Spokestack is powering the, the app's conversation with your user. Um, so you're not, you, you use Google to uh, initiate the interaction, but uh, once your app opens, uh, Starbucks can take over uh, the interaction using Spokesack, uh, you know, complete the, use, the, the user request um, and, you know, potentially deliver uh, a branded response, you know, again, depending on the modality, depending on what makes sense for the, for, the, for the user and the information, you know, maybe it's display something on the screen, maybe it's speak back using a branded TTS voice. Um, it's up to the it's up the point is it's up to uh the company it's up to the app to decide how that interaction proceeds uh if you're using google app actions solely it's not up to you to decide, to decide. google is sitting there deciding for you how things go that's interesting so what you described there is essentially that if if the starbucks app uses app actions from google and you so so for those that are tuning in, app actions from Google is the ability to ask Google for a specific query, and it will then open the app in the specific place. So, for example, if you said, "Hey Google," ask, I'm just checking if any devices are on. I think one's on behind. <laughs> it is. <laughs> if you were to say, if you were to say, "Hey Google," order me a. Uh, I don't know, whatever you said, no, some kind of crazy coffee. Dustin, are you a coffee guy? <laughs> Not a coffee guy, no. None of us are coffee guys, by the way. <laughs> so order me a cup of tea from Starbucks. If you said that, then what you're describing is that, so they're using the app action, it would, it would send you into the Starbucks app, and the idea of the app action is that you would be put into the Starbucks app at the place that has tea selected. So what you're saying there is you can then enable that app to be voice enabled so that when I land on the Starbucks app, you can take over and say, is there anything else you'd like? 
and I can say, yeah, give me uh, a, a cookie. And the whole thing can begin, then be carried on using using the voice in a seamless transition. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And that's that's that that's the that's the vision of what SwiftSec offers uh, uh, for putting voice into software is that it's a flexible platform on which you can build you know voice interactions and we interoperate with other voice platforms. Um, so we're not we're we're not a wall garden um, and we can work with uh, the the other the other technology platforms. But at the same time, uh, we're not interested in you know taking <laughs> taking over the world or owning all your data. Um, we're simply a services company that builds that builds that builds services and, and tools for you. Um, so the uh, the Starbucks the Starbucks example is great. Starbucks uses what Google offers uh, as an entry point, and you know that there's there's a lot of talk also about smart smart speakers having a discovery discoverability problem. Um, how do you know what your smart speaker can do? Um, Spokesec, uh gives you the tools to help address that. Um, you know, your phone is already full of apps that you have selected. Your users uh, or customer's phone is already full of the apps they've selected. Um, they know they don't have a discoverability problem because they know what's on their phone. Um, and so they can ask about it specifically. Um, and Spokesec can give that voice interface ability to each app on, on, the, on the customer's phone. That's wicked. Have you seen that before, Dustin? That's brand new on me, that being able to continue the conversation in the app after triggering an interaction from a voice assistant. No, 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 certainly never seen that. Yeah, so um, check out the tutorial. It's dropping, uh, I believe, today. Uh, um, uh, one of our, our, uh, our principal conversational linguist uh, engineer um, uh, leads you through how to how to do that on a technical level. You build up an example app uh, that, that does exactly this. Super cool. Hmm. Wow. That's, uh, I was dwelling on that for a minute because I think that's pretty unique. Can it then... Can it do exactly what we described there? Like you, you would arrive into the app, and then the app would be the thing that that initiates the next prompt. Yeah. Wow. That's yeah. 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 So exactly. So um, again, you're using the you know, on, on iOS devices. It's called the series shortcut, um, yeah. and on Google, it's called app actions. Same. Same technology. Um, uh, as far as function goes. Um, but uh, yeah, initiate the transaction and initiate the, uh, the, the session really um, by, by invoking, you know, hey Siri, okay, Google, um, ask for what you want. Ah, Siri just lit up, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, it's only uh, you, Johnson, next looks Dustin. <laughs> right. <laughs> it, it, it's guaranteed to happen. Uh, usually my iPad is closed, uh, so they lock it open. The um, uh, invoke it. Uh, using using the platform, um, begin the interaction using the platform. The platform then delivers you onto you know the brands, onto the app, onto the software, um, and then you can continue that interaction uh, using your own uh, using your own interface. So you're no longer dependent on uh, on the platform provider to uh, to give you that interface uh, um, capability. Uh, you can use Spokesec to do that, and which means again. You get to own that interaction all the way, um, so you can use your own TTS voice to respond. You don't have to use mm -hmm. a Siri voice to respond. You can use your own NLU to respond. You don't have to uh, literally send Google all your product and sales data in order for them to develop your own uh, your their NLU model for you. Um, again, you can uh, once your once your app is open. Um, you can listen for the wake word, uh, your custom branded wake word, um, and you know continue a voice interaction if the user say walks away or gets distracted or you know, has to put the phone down for some reason. But if the app is still open, they can come back and say, "Hey, Starbucks, you know, uh, what about that? What about that cup of tea?" Um, mm -hmm. And that's a that's a great example of you know the app is being polite. It's listening. It's for its name. It's not recording anything, but the consumer gets that great experience of, I was using Starbucks, um, I stopped for a second, I want to keep using Starbucks, I know that I'm using Starbucks, so I'm going to say, hey, Starbucks, you know, let's let's keep talking. Mm, like it. Why why isn't every app voice enabled then? Like, is, do you think it's because we're just too early in in the sort of industry and things like that, and people are not aware of the the possibilities, or is it that the value hasn't been proven yet? Like, 
what are the challenges in terms of voice in app adoption and why haven't why aren't all apps voice enabled that's a great question um you know i just described a world that i would like to to live in you know um i, I, I would like to be able to you know uh, uh, speak when it's convenient for me to to my to the various computers that i have all around me and not have to speak when i don't want to um why isn't it fully available um i mean i think you touched on a couple of reasons um you know the technology is still new um uh, if you kind of look at the history of uh, voice technology, like uh, for example, um, the word error rate in in, a, in automatic speech recognition uh, only just got below uh, human level um, in the last, I believe, five five years. Um, uh, natural language understanding is still uh, 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 limited in its ability to process, so there's no general purpose um, uh, MOU as much as. You know the smart speaker platforms would like you to believe otherwise. Um, you know the um, the mean opinion score for um, text to speech uh, synthesized voices um, is still just you know on the on a little bit on the wrong side of the uh, uncanny valley. And so um, so when you combine all that together, it's just a hard um, it's a hard thing to think put it all together and say yes like. All these things, by like have their have their drawbacks, but we have enough here that we can actually create something super compelling for people. Um, you know, having having a few words didn't stop um, a lot of interesting technology from being launched. Um, the um, the the other thing is just um, a lack of kind of um, imagination. Um, so. Uh, you know, we have great examples in TV shows. You know, I'm a big, a big uh, trucker. Um, just finished, just watching, uh, rewatching Star Trek: Next Generation season seven with my kids. Um, talking to the computer is a really compelling uh, example, but it's hard to translate. Um, you know, the Star Trek computer interactions into okay, I'm in charge of, um, I'm in charge of a, a, you know, the Starbucks app. How do I how do I take what I see there and translate that into a vo what a satisfying voice interaction is uh, for my app? Um, so it requires, you know, some under some 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 imagination, uh, some deeper technical understanding. Um, and as folks think, that's what we want to. This part of our mission is helping people develop that conceptual model for how voice could work uh, in their in their apps. Nice. I like it. Ragu on uh, YouTube has said it might also be something to do with security. So, for example, apps in India are getting banned all of the time. <laughs> mm. is, is, is security and concerns about security, a, um, is it if there's a couple of questions I could ask here. One is, is it a valid concern? In terms of is, is there real security threats uh, or vulnerabilities with with voice technology, or is it a perception that some people may have? So, uh, one of our core values at Spokesec is is privacy, um, and one of the reasons why is 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 because um, as you uh, a cursor search of uh, of the history of voice technology shows you some really. Uh, Compelling examples of privacy violations um, that uh, that have been perpetrated by you know various um, state and non-state actors. Um, at Spokesec, we offer um, at Spokesec we offer uh, uh, on-device wakeword. Um, we offer on-device uh, automated speech recognition. Uh, we offer on-device uh, natural language understanding. Uh, so all three of these things can operate all offline. There's no phoning home. There's no cloud involved. Um, we think that's really compelling from a uh, from a privacy and security standpoint, um, and it's something that, uh, frankly, a lot of other platforms aren't that interested in offering uh, because it's not in their self interest. Um, again, we're a services company, we're a tools company, so we um, we happily you know uh, build these things for you so that you can use them all offline. Um, and so uh, you know, in India, when an app gets uh, or potentially a service gets blocked, uh, that means your voice interface goes down. With Spokestack, um, it's all on device. Once you have it and it's running on your phone, um, there's nothing to get blocked. 
um, so we can offer uh, that level of additional level of security that's not really available um, otherwise in the market. Nice. And I imagine when you, the question that I used to have, I think we had it with Jan Lachelle from Snips, which is like, what happens when you want to update things? Um, but if it's running on an app, presumably it just updates when you update the app, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. Cool. Well, no, this has been absolutely fantastic. Really appreciate you joining us. Where can people uh, check out Spokestack if they want to get involved in it? And where people can, where can people kind of learn around some of the things we've been talking about in terms of how to implement this stuff with, with Spokestack? Yeah, um, we, we're, we're always talking on Twitter um, uh, at Spokestack. Um, we have a website, Spokestack.io. Um, uh, if you go to spokestack.io slash tutorials, um, we uh, are going, like I said, we're going to be dropping that Google App Actions tutorial. We have a bunch of other tutorials on um, how to integrate Spokestack Tray um, into your app, um, amongst others. Um, and uh, we're um, always publishing some stuff on our uh, blog, uh, spokestack.io slash blog. Um, uh, lots of good information there, especially around our conceptual model for how voice works for um, software. Wicked. Sounds good. Well, thanks for joining us and uh, happy Thanksgiving for tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, tomorrow. Yeah, very good. Yeah, I appreciate your time. It's great to talk to you guys. Uh, I'm super, super, super thankful. Wicked. And yeah, happy Thanksgiving thank you. to you too, Dustin. Oh, thank you so much. Same to you, Ken. Nice. It's going to be a quiet day tomorrow, I think. <laughs> Uh, but thank you everyone for joining us uh, for this one and uh, yeah happy Thanksgiving to you all and hopefully we look forward to seeing you next week and from us at VUX World and from Noel thank you very much and uh, see you again